Welcome to Music and Medicine. Welcome to Music and Medicine. Welcome to Music and Medicine. I'm your host, Dr. Motion Lewis. Welcome to Daily Dose of Dr. Mosh. I'm your host, Dr. Moshe Lewis. I'm excited and delighted to be joined by Ms. Kathleen Bradley. Known to many of you as Ms. Parker, she's had an illustrious career with various facets, including music, dance, performance. She's an author. She's a motivational speaker. She's also an entrepreneur. Delighted to have you with us. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah. So I wanted to kind of roll back the clock a little bit and really talk about sort of the beginning and some of your early aspirations for music, where they came from, and your performances. Well, you know, um, I'm from Girard, Ohio, which yes. is a very small place outside of Youngstown. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. then people don't know Youngstown, <laughs> right. so I so, say Cleveland. Right. Everybody They're knows Cleveland, that Cleveland sure. Browns or what have you. Sure. And that's not too terribly far from there, but mm. nevertheless, uh, when I was younger, my mother would always sing around mm. the house. She had a pretty voice. And, right. uh, you know, being back in those days when I was a young child, mm -hmm. uh, we were able to go to the movie theater mm -hmm. and watch the movies. I think it was a nickel. Right. Uh, oh, just wow. to go in. <laughs> I was myself telling on myself. Okay. But we would go and sure. see, and I was just in awe of the silver screen right. and, and the actors and people on the screen mm -hmm. looking at them and just... Wow, just, you know, and we'd always, my mother would always take us to the movie theater. Sure. I just thought, one day I want to do that. I want right. to be up there. Sure. Regardless, it didn't matter at that point in time whether I saw anybody of a darker hue of my mm. skin color or whatever. Sure. I just knew that there were people that were living beings up on right. the screen doing sure. some acting or what have you. I wanted to do it. Right. And thereafter, my mother, she would kind of put me in the little uh, uh, places in the uh, area that would help. Uh, gear you towards uh, modeling mm. and a little acting sure. and I did acting classes in school well we didn't have really acting classes but right. we did have some plays, plays right. so sure. I got into the plays and different things and I sang the right. very first sure. time I sang it the uh, school play was people <laughs> people who love people <laughs> are the luckiest people yeah. in the world Thank you very much. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> I love I the sang comedic people. side. I have a people photo at so home of me singing sure. that. And yeah. that was so exciting. And, right. you know, from there I just kind of cultivated everything and was ready to get out of uh, uh, Ohio and sure. come to Los Angeles. Right. And then what made you, though, inspired to actually make that leap? Were there some artists that you followed, some musicians that you're interested in working with? Well, actually, I would not have really left. Ohio had it right. not been for my big sis sure. and her family who lived not far from me and sure. I, who I grew up with, Terry mm -hmm. Scott okay. uh, Jackson then, sure. and they moved to uh, LA oh. about a year before I was ready to graduate. Sure. So they were grounded there and I'm like, oh God, thank you. I have somewhere to go and sure. somebody to, to stay with. Yes, right. Otherwise, that's a big move. I would not have sure been able to just go on my very own and just sure. go somewhere and stay then I'm not that kind of kid you know at that point right so that inspired me to go and I met a lot of different people through being there at that sure. point in time in the 70s we're yeah. talking early 70s right. and I entered into quite a few pageants right Miss Fine Brown Frame <laughs> right. yeah, uh, uh, Miss uh, uh, oh my god you name it doing sure. whatever title right. it had Black I California didn't care. yeah well Miss sure. Black California that was like my the ultimate after I had mm, geared okay. up for Worked the other up. one sure. you know I worked my way exactly. up right. and then happened to win Miss Black California beauty mm -hmm. pageant and uh, after that I was fortunate enough to be Cho I didn't win the, the uh, you know, Miss Black America that year, right. but I was chosen out of five other pageant uh, regional winners from different states to go to Vietnam oh, wow. to sure. perform in the USO tour. Right, so you guys went all over the world we, with this? Well, well, that was just with the Miss Black America tour. Okay. We sure. were specifically going with the USO tour to the Phila um, Thailand and Vietnam at that time. Right. Uh, the war was pretty much kind of ending at that point, you know, from mm -hmm. Vietnam. 
But it was quite an interesting pleasure. My brother was stationed over there, my brother mm. Scotty. Right, wow. So I had an so, opportunity right. to see him. Wow, which but is amazing. Just, yeah, just being there, can you imagine? Sure. It's so different than Ohio or California. Right, and right. then just and being the, back in that era when we had the Vietnam War, how right. devastating it was, right. and how many of our very young men were being killed. Right. Wow. You know what? Sure. The, nobody still knows and figure out what right. the hell we were fighting for. Sure. You know? Right, right. But just to lots. be there, right. I mean, that was that was absolutely one of the highlights of my right. lifetime. Wow. And then how did things transition from being in the pageant to actually being on TV? Well, actually, being let me take you back a little bit from sure. being in the pageant. Mm -hmm. Uh, John Daniels from Mavericks Flat, who mm -hmm. was the Mavericks Flat is the West Coast Apollo Theater. Right, okay. And then some because it was also a disco, so right. absolutely more than the Apollo. But different artists and groups would come there all the time. And all the big names. Manic, the big name Shaka Khan, wow. Richard Pryor, the comedians, Red Fox, OJs. A lakeside, uh, Ohio right, Lakeside sure. started out there, right, right. Uh, Howard Hewitt, uh, The Whispers, you name right, it. Wow. But John Daniels, he had the foresight and had a couple of other groups together before. Mm -hmm. He right. wanted an all-female, seven female mm -hmm. singing wow. group together, which he did. He got a few of us out of the pageant and sure. then some of the others he had known. And he put us together and he mm -hmm. groomed us. and. I mean, we were like very scantily clad. Nice. We had these fringes on, <laughs> platform boots this high. We Back had to come day. up to your knee and right. look. I mean, right. we were like Tina Turner, right. Temptations, Dance, sang, Beyonce, perform. Dance, sang, perform. I mean, we were hot. Right. We were way ahead right. of our time. I and they called say, you all the, the love, love machine. machine. Yes. 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 But and, and then the very first time we ever performed was at Saint Tropez mm. wow. in France. The first time. The very first <laughs> European <laughs> tour was. Sure. San sure. I mean, it was incredible. Wow. Um, at that time, though, it was a little like going out of your element. Mm. And then we had so to nice. share our rooms mm. when we got there. Because you know, but in Europe, everything is so different. Tight. And then the bathroom is down the <laughs> right, hallway. Right, right, exactly. Right. Like, wow, oh my God. <laughs> right. But after a while, we got sure. used to it. And we traveled sure. around for many, many years. I stayed with the singing group eight years. We were right. with Motown, wow. sure. Arista, were in, well, they were interested in us. And we sang with Ducali Records, some of the European mm. uh, places, Japan, Italy, Germany, Spain, Belgium, right. Sweden, Switzerland, Africa, wow. Asia. Oh you name it. Gosh. Done it, been there. Sure. How wonderful, how yes. fulfilling it was to be able to right. be part of that group and have wow. traveled through those years. Right. We worked in Las Vegas for many years. We opened act for Tom Jones, right. Right. Uh, sure. uh, Tom Julio Iglesias, uh, 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 um, Sammy Davis Jr. Yes. Just loved us. We traveled man. with him, Red wow. Fox, and Excellent. Isaac Hayes, and sure. even met Elvis Presley. Right, right. We were talking a little Elvis about Presley that. Elvis Presley when Amazing. we were working at the Hilton Hotel, right. wow. and we would see him sometimes coming backstage wow. you know actually we're all the help and the the people go in and when you're working and, sure. you know and we would right. see backstage him door. going to rehearsal or something and he'd have his little entourage and <laughs> he said hi girls we went hi we went oh my god yeah, sure. you know it was quite uh, unbelievable what a guy but um it was a wonderful experience and we did quite a bit from that, through that uh, experience, I learned a lot. Right, and it was it, Kathleen Bradley and um, the Love Machine. I want to point that out because no, it wasn't now, Kathleen Bradley oh, okay. and the no, Love Machine. Okay. Don't say so, that. Okay, so no, what it was, was the just title? Always the Love okay. Machine. Sure. Okay. And we were together. Well, I was with the group eight years, mm, and they okay. kept on going mm -hmm. and had some other uh, girls inf infiltrate within the period of time. A couple sure. of the girls dropped out for various reasons, getting sure. married, wanted to do something else, and what have you. But John, he did revitalize mm -hmm. the love machine okay. with five of us. Mm -hmm. And when, when I was, uh, I think I was right, I was working still on The Price is Right. I was right. still on The Price is Right. And that was 1997 or something, sure. John did that. Right. And we worked in Las Vegas for a while and we performed a little bit more. And, you know, a few things though happened, transpired, and we did some more recording and sure. what have you. You know, we're a little right. older then, right. but we right. were still right. kicking it. We were still doing it. Right. Exactly. Now, that hurt my knee right now. Right. Anyway, <laughs> Is there a doctor somewhere? That's my bad knee. <laughs> but I'm still walking on the because we did exactly. so much. Sure. I mean, we were hot. Dancing. We were sure. just, you know, not I've seen the performance. Not to stand along, right. stand still singing performers, right. you know. And the temptations, they loved us though. Sure. But, Anyway, uh, so, you know, we did that, and 
But from being, like I always call it, the John Daniels hard knock school of mm -hmm. life mm -hmm. and educating us mm -hmm. and having, you know, drilling us. He was wow. really the taskmaster, mm -hmm. you know, of them. We were like, wow. You know, you like you love serious. your mom and your daddy, but you hate them all at the <laughs> right, same right, time because right, they're hard right, on right, you exactly. kind of thing. <laughs> driving. But then you, yeah, driving. But then after a period of time in life, you really come to appreciate mm, that because right. it's things that you've learned and been around. And so I basically, I do attribute that to even being chosen on the uh, Price is Right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. when I got on, on that show. Right. But it was after I had gotten married and I had a child and my second marriage actually. And so uh, my agent called and said, Kathleen, would, uh, would you like to be a Barker Beauty on the Price is Right? Wow. I'm like, well, yeah. So and I you just it, had your child. Yeah, very three recently. months, wow. my son. My <laughs> body though, I was, you to, know, to that your side face side. and your body in this industry, mm -hmm. I tell these people, mm -hmm. It is your passport. Mm -hmm. Always be ready for it. You know, you can't be blowing up. You're supposed to be fitting a size right. eight and your right. ass is a 12. Right. <laughs> that happened to me one time. <laughs> All the prices, right. That was, and then when I finally did get it, though, I'm jumping ahead. But uh, when I was on the show, uh, we have our costumes, everybody dressed the same way. And we take hiatus, you know, hiatus, right, you yeah. take a little vacation off. Right. And when we come back, everybody was always right, a few pounds right, heavier. Right, right. And so we had this red dress, and the wardrobe lady came in, put the red dress, fitting me, and putting it on, and she couldn't get it zipped up. Mm, right. Like, what are you sure? What are you doing? And I said, right. what? I said, this, I, that must be Diane or somebody, because she's small. Mine. I'm a six, eight, she was a six. I know it's not mine. I said, hey, see, take it off, take it off. She took it off, she showed me the label, it's a Kathleen. I'm like, oh damn, I couldn't even get in the dress. Yeah, <laughs> Those yeah. five pounds and right, ten make pounds. Such a difference. Oh, they make a big difference, right. especially, you in know, on places. television right. already. Right. We'll put ten pounds on you. Right. So but you know, basically we just had to always watch your weight, but right. I was always watching mine and you know, I was just fortunate to get on the show. I auditioned time after time and they were seeing like two hundred and fifty girls from all over right. and what have you and then finally I claimed it, I did, I wrote it down, I claimed right. it, I prayed on it, and you know, I sabotaged sure. the other girls. No, <laughs> right. no, no. no, I did not. And the first flight, <laughs> so be my like, model on the show. Yeah, trip, look at that. But no, no, I didn't do that, but it was just ordained to be mine, right. and I sure. felt it that it was. Right. And saying that to say through my travels with the love machine, I was able to communicate with Janice, Diane, mm. and Holly, who right. my age pretty sure. much anyway, because there were a lot of younger girls trying sure. up. They were right. a little intimidated. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd been on stage sure. in front of it. audiences. You know I right. was very comfortable. comfortable. Right. And not always being able to be fully clothed. I mean, since you're in a swimsuit or something yeah. of that nature, right. so you got to be very comfortable. I was just, it was right, it was just ordained. It was for me, you know, by divine order and everything. Right. So, um, and like I was saying, I was able to communicate and talk to them about my travels, this, right. that, and the other, and be a little braggadocious sure. about certain things. And yes. they're like, oh, wow. Right. Confidence. So that, yeah, and all of that, you know, everything that has transpired and gone on in my life prior to that, I attribute to being a build up in education and utilizing things at the right time that you know, even like in school when you have math. Right. Like who needs math? Who sure. needs this? Right. Who needs that? But, these but then this is one day <laughs> you're gonna, you're gonna need, need to know how to measure your <laughs> right. sink or your something. You're gonna right. do and pull out that measuring tape. Right. And then you know how to divide and multiply that or have some algebra. So right. yeah, don't ever take anything for granted, people. Utilize sure. what sure. you learn. All the time. It's gonna come in handy one day. And if I'm not mistaken, it was the role on the price is right that somebody named Ice Cube saw. Oh, that is you know what? Uh Oddly enough, when Friday came about, uh, Ice Cube, he told, or was searching for me to find out who I was because he'd watched The Price is Right. Right. And he told somebody, he said, I want that black lady <laughs> on The Price is Right. Of course, I didn't have right a name. Right the, right Bob Barker right. would say it, lovely Kathleen, right. lovely Janice. Right. So, but anyway, he tracked me down through my agent and right. my agent said, Kathleen, there's a movie and Ice Cube, um, they want to audition you <clears throat> for a role. And, 
uh, here's the role, what you have to do. And they sent me some sides and stuff mm-hmm. or whatever. I'm like, oh, this is right up my alley. Yeah, so true. I think there were only some, maybe one or two other women. Right. And they were pretty much kind of wanted me uh, specifically, which I was okay. flattered to do. And obviously I got it. Okay. And the rest is history. <laughs> and it was quite an undertaking of really fun more right. than anything. And we shot it in so many days, 30 days, 28 days. Uh, I had like two days of work on it. And who who would have thought it would have become the yeah. iconic blow up right. movie? 20 some odd years now? Yeah, 28 years, I think, Amazing. maybe a little bit more right now right. when we shot it. Amazing. And then just in terms of, it seems that every step of the way, like you said, the being with the Love Machine helped prep you for some of the time being on The Price is Right, and that also helped prep you. What did you feel like you learned during the time that you were on The Price is Right that you really also carried forward in your next phase? Well, I, CPS, mm. they're so professional. That's the right. big time. It right. doesn't get no bigger than that, baby. Right. When you're working there and or some, some of these real big movies, that has put have put money into productions right and they want to make sure that people are doing what you know what they're supposed to do hit your spot be where you're supposed to be because time is money right. and when they say that that's what they mean they do mm. not have time to waste and go overtime and pay people overtime because right. pretty much when we were on the prices right we do everything in time mm. meaning that there's a, a, a live audience okay. even though it was pre-recorded but we were doing live shows and people were reacting live and stuff and it was you know we would go uh when we got to work we do a production meeting everybody was given their little spot and time and place where to be where to show up what product to do and it's very important you hit your mark so i learned you know being a little bit more professional and getting there on time you cannot better not be late to work like some of the other (laughs) models after me i won't name them (laughs) Uh, I had problems getting there on time, but right. I remember racing to work down yeah. La Brea. Yeah. Do, 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 do. I felt the Wizard of Oz getting there, right. you know. <laughs> oh boy, do, 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 do. get there before the door closes sure. and get in that production meeting and act like you've been there. Right. But uh, that and just, you know, a lot of professionalism mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. about uh, doing things and how things are operated and, you know, being around the camera, the crew and everybody in the backstage and things that go on. and. Right was quite a great learning experience as sure. well. And what about working with Mr. Barker himself, some of the things you felt like you learned or oh, were well, able to take Bob was a consummate, absolute professional. Right. And you know, he just knew what he was doing obviously for mm-hmm. those many years because when I got there, it was, uh, they started in 72 and it had been 17 years wow before they even decided to have a person of color on there. So Bob had been doing it for years. He was just a a professional, nice guy, quick on his feet, thinking, funny, good humor. He was a a joy to work with, you know, for the most part in the early days that I was there and um, just um, knew what he was doing, you know. People loved him, you know, that was the mecca. Right. You go there, you didn't have to have an IQ of 150 or whatever right. to try to win anything. Sure. All like you that. really had to do is know the price of groceries, right. <laughs> you right. know, pretty very, much of, right. the, of food or cars or some right. items and things of that nature. Sure. And have fun, it was so much fun. Sure. And obviously we were always rooting for the uh, people, the contestants sure. to win. Yes, mm-hmm. of course, absolutely. And so it seems that this comedic side was able to continue right on into Mrs. Parker and tell us about some of the comedy you brought to that role, even though you might not consider yourself a comedian. <laughs> no, I love comedy. Oh my God, I, I love comedy. I do funny things at home and still to this day on interviews get myself in trouble sure. saying mean things or whatever, you know. Um, but. Like, you know, I worked with Bernie Mac and right. my scene and Ice Cube and Chris Tucker, mm-hmm. they were far across the street, but we right. did have interaction when we first rehearsed sure. it and everything, say yes. the lines and go over them. Uh, and of course, F. Gary Gray, the director, oh my God, that was his de- directorial de- debut for right. a film. And he gave us so much creativity for the actor to be able to do uh, what we wanted to do, right. I think that's Makes more natural. Yeah, it's more natural, and I think that's what made the uh, 
the film more believable right. and easy that you didn't have to stick to every word in right. the script and sure. there was a lot of ad libbing <laughs> right. oh. and which was really a w great you know just like give you a few words right. come together and go for it you know sure. because you know nobody really exactly showed me how to right. bend down right. and right. stoop right. down with right. the right <laughs> angles and sure. everything and right. looking <laughs> you know it just worked and everything everybody did pretty much just worked on uh, the set and the, the aspects and the different characters that came to life that people love and people mimic and people do things about right now. Right. You know, every sure. time we talk mm -hmm. about it and right. there's out there, who has, who, what phrase out of Friday is your favorite <laughs> phrase? <laughs> right, right. There's so many fake right? phrases people yeah, say. It's become a classic. Mm -hmm. And people always are still emulating me as Miss Parker. Sure. They emulate, uh, 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 my girl uh, Angela Means right, as yes. you know Felicia right, right. and yes, Ice Cube that, yes. and everybody for the holidays right. and still and I see all the memes and the people doing right. stuff it's really amazing sure, right. people are emulating trying to be like me sure. as <laughs> a like character a, sure, right. and uh, I actually just recently went back to the neighborhood mm, okay. where we shot the film right. Which I is had, right here in L.A.? Yes, okay. in Com uh, 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 Carson. Carson, okay. Um, is it Carson? Compton? Or somewhere sure. around. Right, I see. Yeah, I know, on 126th Street <laughs> in Normandy. <laughs> and I just happened to go by there. A friend of mine, right. he works in the area there, and he's a plumber. He knows the people. Mm. They have the Miss Parker house. Oh, really? The people okay. there on the weekends sure. come. They have bus loads of people. <laughs> oh, they have sure. a bus like TMZ, TMZ bus right, again, right. and all the other ones that come right. and bring tours. And you are stopped now on the tour. And they have my Your photo place. in the yard mm -hmm. with the hose. <laughs> they charge people, obviously, <laughs> take a picture in front of the right. house, and ten dollars with wow, or without the hose. <laughs> I'm going to. So Let me tell you this. That. And then across uh, the street, of course, was uh, uh, um, Craig's house. And they have wow. Craig and Smokey on <laughs> so, the porch with the picture. <laughs> and they have people that can go on there and take a photo with sure. them right, and right. what have you in the driveway. Right. And oh, so God. I've been asked to come back and I was going to, you know, I'm going to go set up there and sign sure. some autographs and have nice. people take some photos and sure. everything of me because people right. love it. They just, yeah. it's like being on the Walk of Fame sure. in Hollywood. Right. You know, right. isn't that amazing? Right. Just and, being uh, on people that tried street. to duplicate it, but yeah. never oh. had the same success as no. that movie. Right, no, really. not Very even authentic. the second or third sure. one he tried to do just didn't work out. There will sure. never be another Friday. Yeah. You know, just can't do it. And talking about legends, tell us a little bit about working with Bernie Mac. Oh, uh, Bernie. I mean, you know, unfortunately, I mean, we worked together that one day, and though we became friends afterward, because mm -hmm. you have to imagine, even though on the screen it's like a split second when he's saying, Miss Paul, come Miss Paul, <laughs> walking across the street, <laughs> right. and then comes into the house. Sure, right. So we spent some time in the house sure. when they had to cut, cut to and do some other things and just mm -hmm. talked. And, related and, right. and you know had some nice little just conversations about yes. life in general and mm -hmm. that uh, was really when I first I saw him talk to him and we would communicate I was working with a company that had these good vitamins and minerals and mm -hmm. different things and I had suggested for him to take and he sure. had ordered some and he and his wife in Chicago and they said you yeah. know come visit when you're there sure. and what have you and whenever I'm doing the show you know let me know get you some tickets I mean, you know, he was just a wonderful, all out and out, cool, great guy. Everybody working yeah, on that sure. set was so yeah. amazing. I never really worked with everybody, mm -hmm. obviously. Sure. You just don't have that opportunity because right. you're not in that Time. scene. Right, right. You're just not in that scene. But uh, it was amazing. Like Angela, Angela Means, mm -hmm. Angela Means, who played Felicia. Right. She and I, we we never really had the opportunity to work together, but we met at the uh, screening when we had the premiere. Right. I met so a lot of that people touch. in the premiere. Right. And she, she was pregnant at that time, I think, mm -hmm. during the premiere. And uh, so we talked then briefly, but we hadn't seen each other for since right. then. a long time. And then Billy Griffin from the uh, Miracles, right. one of the um, guys who joined after Smokey, Billy Griffin, my friend, he was doing a, he does the grooviness, mm -hmm. um, broadcast talk show he had me on the show and Angela right, wow. and she and I just really reconnected nice and it was so wonderful bringing us together again under that auspices you know to be able to talk about the film in different aspects 
yeah. of us both being in it in different levels, you right, know. Right. But she is a great person. Have you ever thought about that? Uh, what it might look like if we brought the whole cast back together, let's say, for the final Friday? Well, everybody, all the fans, really, that's what they were hoping and praying mm -hmm. for, right. for even the sequels or the other ones. But right. I think Ice Cube and DJ Pool, they took it way too far out of the spectrum, especially the right. second one, right. you know, it with the Hispanic families and different people. They were right. trying to expand upon it, which sure. it just, to me, it right. did, I, I, I think I've seen it one time. Mm -hmm. I will not watch it again. It right. wasn't that funny. It was okay to me. Right. And the third one to me was a little funnier with right. the Christmas right. and Cat. different thing, and Cat Williams right. and different Smiley things, right. and, and my boy, uh, uh, yeah, all of them. So uh, that, I, uh, I enjoyed seeing it. But mm -hmm. the last one, they're trying to still get uh, the script right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For some reason, they just can't seem to get it right because, um, uh, 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 what's the name of the uh, production? What? Is it Lionsgate? Uh, yeah, uh, 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 Lionsgate owns the rights. Right, okay. And they just can't get the script right to see what. They want to inject and inter interject into it. I don't know, but uh, I hope and I would pray that right. they would want to go back to the community. Right, right, right. Sure. From once right, it sure. started, right. I mean, a lot of people probably still live in their homes right, that right, were right, there right. in mean, the sure, movie. Sure. Mm -hmm. People have changed their lives around, but you still have to have that element of fun and excitement yes. right. and calamity. Right, right, and the comedy. Yeah, the comedy. <laughs> It's like Joy a, the pain. Mm, it's it's like a, what's the name of the movie where grumpy old men right, sure, kind yes. of thing. You know when they sure. were younger and and right. they got to, together, but you still would see them younger right. when they were younger so. and grumpier right. sure, old right, right. men. But just still the same element. Right, right. Don't change sure. the beer that made Milwaukee famous. <laughs> exactly. You know? I like that. Let's keep it on right, the right. same like character. Right, Keep it authentic, back, real, same neighborhood. Doing Miss Parker might. <laughs> Still be a new older <laughs> hoe. Who knows? <laughs> Shit. <Whatever>. Anyway, <laughs> but with some kids, I, I, right, I right. told I told Ice Cube. I said, "What would be funny? You're gonna have and show Miss Parker in the neighborhood, still mm -hmm. in the house. Right. And then I have a child. Right. He's kind of grown up a little bit. Okay. But he looks just like Bernie Mac. <laughs> exactly. He looks just like right. Bernie Mac. But I still have my <laughs> husband Tony, right. Tony Cox, right. who we're still friends. Yeah. <laughs> And he can say, man, look at my son, right. I'm proud of Total my boy. Total denial. Like, yeah, total denial. And he looks just <laughs> like Bernie Mac. Yeah, exactly. this is your baby. Yeah. Like, exactly. oh, this, you know, little Admiring. things like that. Sure, right. So, yeah, but, you know, unfortunately, we don't get any say into right. it, but sure. I would love to have a, sure. a sit down with all right. the actors right. and people that were involved in yeah. the first one and put our heads together. Sure, right. You know, right. and just let people say, just like they do in the soap operas and stuff. Right. They have different writers for different characters and mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. who know that character and what they would say, what they would do, right. and have a basis for something just back in the neighborhood and, and how they perceive themselves nowadays and what right. they would see and do and what have you. Sure. And then the show has a film and medicine type of bias to it where we talk a little bit about health aspects. It's interesting that um, somebody on The Price is Right, I believe, had sarcoid and then also Bernie Mac. And um, I know that um, that was something that we lost in Sarcoidosis. Yeah, sarcoidosis. Yeah, I, I don't think it, not mm -hmm. anybody on The Price is Right. Oh, nobody there. Okay. But, but and that's sure. primarily uh, mm -hmm. um, African-American kind of a minority kind of a... Uh, illness. Mm -hmm. I have a girlfriend actually who has sarcoidosis, okay. and uh, you know she deals with it, dealt with it, and I, you know, unfortunately, obviously now they have more cures for yeah. it and more ways to see of things that can trigger it. Right. Because I, I, you know, I'm a kind of a health fanatic to mm -hmm. a degree, and uh, there are things that always trigger things right. in our health. Yes. In, yes. Like when they say you are what you eat, and that is so very true. And we can help avoid so many things like a lot of sugar, a lot of salt, right. especially sugar. Sure, yes. And they say salt, but you know our bodies are made up primarily of salt and water. Right, right, exactly. So sugar is it's even really worse. Right. I think if anything I had to ever cut out of my life would be sugar. Mm. Sugar is very bad for you. And we have so many things that we eat, that we put in our diet, that you have to read the labels and see how much sugar content 
it's in it. Sure. And then of course, drink lots and lots and lots of water, right, water, right, water, sure. water, water, water. Right. You can drink alcohol you want, but for every glass of alcohol you drink, you better drink an eight ounce sure. glass of water. Sure. You have to flush it out, keep flush, you know? And would you say those are some of your secrets for health? Continue to exercise, like you said, eating right. It is, all not, of it, you know, right. Because pushing I, you know, I, I will have my cocktails when I want it and, and drink and so and so in moderation sure, now. Sure. I yes. can't do what I used to do, right. Lord no. Right. <laughs> and then you don't want to wake up with that headache and sure. your head in the back of the neck stiff. Ooh, you yeah. all know what I'm talking about. Right. <laughs> it doesn't pay. It might seem like <laughs> fun at the time. Right, right. But you're gonna but pay the price. The next day, boy, you pay the <laughs> price. Right, right. But you and know you what a cure work. for that too. Uh, the night before if you drink a lot, when you go before you go to bed, take two uh, take an alka seltzer okay. and Tylenol. Sure. Two Tylenol and Alka Seltzer. Like, trust me, that will help circumvent having a, a big hangover in the morning. Right, before mm -hmm. Um, And tell us about what you're doing now. I know you've got that entrepreneurial oh, bug yeah. as well. Well, actually, I wrote a book. Yes. Too. It's called Backstage at the Price is Right, mm -hmm. Memoirs of a Barker Beauty. Yes. It encompasses the 10 years while I was on the Price is Right. And of course, it delves back into my little childhood a bit. It's not really yes. my biography per se, mm -hmm. but it deals with the show Big and being show. on the show and different sure. things of that nature. It's, it's a fun read. It's real mm -hmm. quick and easy right. and a lot of photos. Sure. Right. I love looking it's at photos book. and books. Sure. Yes. I don't like to read, but I like <laughs> to write. Okay. So anyway, uh, it's a great book and uh, it's out. It's on Amazon. Yeah. It's been out for a while actually. And I'm doing that. Uh, a few little book tours and things and some mm -hmm. motivational speaking here and there and also uh, I am an entrepreneur like I was telling you we have yes. a family company business wow. it's called the R group yes energy services and consulting my sure. husband's an energy engineer right. and right. my son's working with us with the company and I just help run and operate the company right. and we do energy audits for big commercial buildings and right. hospitals and uh, uh, multi-family uh, companies and right. trying to help keep them environments uh, good and right. uh, the, the uh, Energy Star certifications and right, different right. things. Right, right. Sure. And, so, and meet all the guidelines yeah, and the yeah, requirements. Yeah. So be I'm, compliant. I'm pretty, yeah, be compliant. And I'm pretty much, you know, in the accounting and right there. And I do it in my spare time at the house, aside right. from doing some more commercials and different things I've been doing recently. And I have a movie that's going to be coming sure. out okay. soon. We hope it's called the daughters of dolomite ah okay foster Tell quarter foster quarter he's the director yeah. we already shot it right. uh, uh uh michael collier's in yes. it we got uh, uh 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 hawthorne james yes. Great. uh several other newcomers and different mm -hmm. people and it's uh i'm lock em up lottie okay lock em up lottie <laughs> is a probation <laughs> officer and she makes uh 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 uh, Miss Parker looked like she's on steroids. <laughs> Lock him up, Lottie is a who, honey? She is something else. Y'all just gotta see it to believe I'm it. Skates, ready yeah, to go. yeah. <laughs> and it's really just funny. Um, sure. uh, Dolomite, and a lot of sure. people don't know Rudy Ray Moore and mm -hmm. uh, Foster Quarter had a very good relationship with the yes. real Rudy Ray Moore, so he allowed him to really have rights mm -hmm. to the movie. Which is Eddie and those guys, sure. they really, I don't know where they got the rights from, but. It was okay when Eddie right. Murphy did it, but it was glad sure. we're glad he did sure. right. because he made more people aware of who Rudy right. Ray Moore was um, yeah. and uh, Dolomite, and so we just did our for, uh, section and uh, everything went really good with it. Uh, it was on a very low budget, sure. budget so sure. he's having to do some colorations right. and some different little sure. actions to it and what right. have you. Sure. And we also uh, just uh, it's just funny the. Sure. Um, Dolomite finds out he has three daughters. Oh, wow. He didn't okay. know about right. it. One and, uh, Asian, <laughs> one black, and one Hispanic. Right. And so he has a, a detective. Uh, he has a detective agency. And uh, what happens is the mamas, they're tired of these little heifers of these daughters. They're about 18, 17 years old. And they drop them off at his exactly. agency and say, you take them now. He exactly. did, 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 did. And then he gets in this calamity and gets wow. tied up and sure. looking for this lottery ticket. Sure. And it's quite something. Yeah. Yeah. It's really funny, and uh, Kevin Hart's uh, ex-wife, uh, she's in it as well. Uh, forgive me, I forget her first name, sure. but she's in it. And uh, it's a nice little cast. Sure. It's really I'm fun. Sure. It right. is. It's sure. kind of crazy right. calamity. Right. Right. Okay, a, nothing. Don't fun. take it seriously. Sure. <laughs> it's like really kind of pop popcornish 
uh, kind of, you know, calamity. Sure. Where do you think that mindset came from? Because you're so positive about it. Some people would say, oh, I wouldn't do that role. That's too degrading. I wouldn't do this. I wouldn't do that. And you feel very comfortable being able to laugh yeah. at yourself and have fun with just acting. Yeah. Well, that's what it is. Having sure. fun with acting, having fun with roles and different mm -hmm. things. And when uh, Foster asked me to do it, he let me read some of the script and lines and everything. And I just really brought more to the character <laughs> than what it is. Yeah, right. and, but I have to, you know, know what she's all about sure. and uh, it's gonna be funny people are gonna be maybe uh, surprised at some of the little things I do and everything and because uh, she's a horny little heifer honey working in this prison system and going through these guys trying to find out some information to get this lottery ticket she'll do whatever she has to do to get it wow. but that's the character sure. people have to know you have to uh, um, you know, divide yourself between sure. the character and your, your right. real personality, sure. and that's sure. not me. Sure. Right. You know, not doing that. So, sure. I, and I'm just having fun with it. Sure, absolutely. Last question is: piece of advice for a young artist that may be coming up, a young woman that looks up to you and all that you've accomplished in your career. What advice would you have? I, I usually tell them, you know, try and get involved in some pageantry if you can. Mm -hmm. Because I feel it is good exposure. You know, it used to be a stigma to it, and people felt like you were being exploited to a right. degree. But now, with social media and different things of that nature, you can get in with a pageant and meet different people, especially a lot of young women coming from, you know, Ohio and right, Midwestern places right. and small places and stuff. They don't know what to do, where to turn to. But know your craft, you know, take some lessons. Sure. You can go online and right. you can get with professionals and do Zooms on meeting with uh, professional actors and have one-on-one -on -one with them or you can get in a group situation. But you need to have some basic fundamentals. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not as easy as it seems or maybe right. more difficult than you think. Mm -hmm. And though, you know, some people are natural, some people are not, but right. you just have to know some basic what to do, how to look, right. headshots, right. How to stand. all of that. You know, there's so much information, though, on the, the Internet. You can go to YouTube and find out everything and anything. Sure. Study, study, look at it, learn it, get right. some good headshots. You don't have to pay a lot of money for headshots. Right. You know, they like the casting people, like snapshots, even from your phone, the quality right. of the uh, phone right now will be sufficient. Right. And they have... Uh, uh, different castings. You can go online and join LA Casting or Casting Network, Casting Frontier, Actors Access. There are like three of them. You pay a little fee, mm -hmm. you put your profile in there, ask you all these questions. What do you do? Do you run? Do you this? Do you that? How old are you? What age range you have? They have you put some pictures in there. You can download any uh, audio, uh, video that you have, that you did a little something, do a couple of scenes right. with somebody and put it in there so when uh, casting, looking for somebody in your category, right. you don't even have to have an agent. Right, wow. When somebody's looking in your category, they'll just uh, uh, approach you or put it on there that they need you to come and uh, not come. A lot right. of them self-tape right, right now at home. Right. Wow. Which I'm glad so because we used to travel. go in right. to the studio and th now they're, they're having you go back into the studio to audition. Right. But I love doing my self audition tape, you know, with the background, you right. have to have your lights up, you got to have your little whole setup and everything. <laughs> it's a little more work, but I'd rather do that sometime than to go home. Right. I mean, to go, go out and leave right. my house, really. Right. And uh, just do that, be prepared for that. And a lot of times agents will go on those sites right. And they'll look for talent, right, right. and that that way, you know, you can get an agent through that and tell them you're looking or management through that, and they'll look at your, um, you know, um, your particulars, uh, your portfolio, and everything that you have for modeling. You can do that, and for acting. Absolutely. <clears throat> so words of wisdom, so much to live by. Thank you so much, Miss Bradley, for joining us, Kathleen Bradley, ladies and gentlemen so well known as Mrs. Parker from Friday, but also had an incredible music career with Love Machine and gives us all this advice about how you can basically be empowered to really take charge of your career, but still be willing to do the work and put in the homework and the time to learn your craft, not take it for granted, but really understand that there's a lot that goes into actually being able to be an actress and be on the stage. Thanks so much. Thank you. Absolutely. Pleasure. A pleasure. Thank you. Welcome to Music and Medicine. Welcome to Music and Medicine. Welcome to Music and Medicine. I'm your host, Dr. Moshe Lewis. 